fire on the altar daily. Today I'm bringing a word that's titled, keep the fire on the altar daily. Leviticus chapter 6 and verse 12, the Bible says here, and the fire upon the altar shall be born in it, and it shall not be pulled out, and the priest shall burn wood on it every morning and lay the burnt offering in order upon it. And he shall burn thereon the fire of the peace offerings, the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. The context of the altar started from the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, they would have a physical place where Actual offerings are brought to God. And when they bring these offerings to God, they, the priest will lay animals in forms of burnt offerings and they will offer them before God. And God here was saying to Moses to tell the children of Israel that the fire that was burning on the altar must not be put out. I want you to understand that in the Old Testament, they had different kinds of altar because they had different kinds of offerings and sacrifices. They had the altar that was in the outer court and that was pretty much where the burnt offering was going on. And they had different altars for different purposes. They also had the altars when you proceed into the house of God that had the place where the ark of covenant was placed that is the altar that you know the god of the whole universe put himself within the parameters of a box so that his people can have an emblem of worship now in the new testament we don't necessarily have a physical altar per se where there is physical offerings in terms of animals and goats and bulls and all those things that are being brought in. But may I remind you that the Bible says that the Old Testament is a shadow of what is to come. And so a shadow is usually less than the actual substance. If you had a shadow of something, the shadow is only the fringe of the real deal. It's just like because you don't see something in the physical does not mean that it's less powerful. It might even have increased Jesus himself walking in the earth. He was the shadow of the New Testament. But after he died and his blood was shed on the cross, the shadow becomes virtual. He becomes tangible through many people. There was a time that all of that communication was only done with paper. Praise God. And now we communicate through the email. We communicate through the cyber virtual communication line. Now because we're communicating through the email does not necessarily mean that we don't communicate or what we are passing on is less powerful. It only means that it has moved on from a shadow into a substance. It's gotten to the point where a lot of people can communicate across the line. The altar of the Old Testament has been elevated into the heavenly places. Come on somebody. It's been lifted to the heavenly places. And there is one offering that's been placed upon that altar. And that offering is Jesus Christ. And because he's been placed upon the altar as a burnt offering, all of God's children are now able to access God through the altar. There is a spiritual altar. As a matter of fact, in this building right now, there is an altar. I want you to hear me. Whenever two or three people are gathered in my name, I am there in their midst, the Bible says. And because God is upon this altar, my God, miracles happen because the meaning of the word altar is a portal, a gateway between realms. An altar is a place that 
uh, uh, you can navigate from the earth into the heavenly realm. Am I talking to somebody? And because you do not see the physical altar in the in the New Testament church, it does not mean that there is no altar. In fact, I believe where I'm standing right now is a point of contact for the move of God. It's not a stage. It is an altar. It's a holy place. The house of God is a place of communion. Your heart is an altar. God wants your heart to be a living altar where he can connect with you. Where the Holy Ghost can download a word into your spirit. My God and so many people they take it for granted. A lot of believers they take for granted the power of the altar. I, I, I need to talk to somebody right now. In the Old Testament they understood the power that's upon the altar. My God you don't just do any kind of things upon the altar because the altar was the sacred place where the people meet God. Listen when you get born again you need to understand where your power is. Your power is not on the natural things. The greatest factor to your life is your anointing. In other words, when your anointing is still moving, everything in your life will function. A lot of people believe that the greatest thing to their life is their degree, their network, who they know, who knows them, what they can do. But the Bible says some trust in horses and some trust in chariots. But we remember the name of the Lord our God. And so our power is on the altar. I want you to tell somebody, say your power. Come on, say to somebody, say your power is not in the arm of the flesh. Oh God, help me. The people that normally respond to me, they are still on their way. Say your power. That's better. Say your power is not in the arm of the flesh. Your power, your strength is on the altar. <laughs> oh my God, tell somebody, say, you think you know where my power is. My power is in my anointing. <laughs> I am stronger because of the anointing that's on my life. I'm not who I am because of anything you see on the outside. But I'm able to navigate life because of the anointing of God that's upon me. Is somebody hearing me right now? If you miss where your power is, the devil will cause your life to go Go helter scatter. But once you know that your power is in the anointing of God, you are going to prioritize your anointing. And you say like David, God, cast me not away from your presence. Don't take your anointing, your Holy Spirit from me. Because if you withdraw me from the place of the altar, I will lose everything. The altar is powerful. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. Whatever you are dealing with now in your life, hold on to the horn of the altar come on somebody as long as you don't let the devil take you away from the altar the place of fellowship the place of presence the place of the anointed no matter what you're dealing with you are going to overcome every time that every storm comes don't leave the altar who am I talking to right now you tell every devil you can fight me but I'm going to be at the altar because when you are at the altar you maintain a higher ground. We don't move in the flesh. We don't move by the will of man. We navigate by the power of God that's upon the altar. Come on, hear me here. Somebody say, my power is upon the altar. The altar is a sacred place. It's a delicate place. It's, it's, it's a place of consecration. It's a place of enormous power. Because that's where the portals open. And that's where there's a connection between heaven and earth. The place of prayer is a place where you download miracles. The altar is a place where you commune with God. It's a place where God speaks to you. And there's a lot of altar 
encounters in your life. But I don't want to take too much time. I'm just going to take it in a breezy. There's an altar in the communion of the saints. There's an altar in the church. There's an altar in the house of God. There's another altar in your heart. There's an altar, altar in your family. The secret place. Your family devotion. That's another place of altar. Where God wants to meet with you. Your power is in your altar. If the devil can steal your altar, he will steal your life. If the devil can take away your place of consecration, your place of anointing, your place of empowerment, he's going to take everything else from you. We are not people in the natural. Help me, Holy Ghost. In the Old Testament, whenever the Israelites will go to war, they first have to go to the altar. They have to ask God, Lord, are we going to win this battle? How should we engage this battle? It didn't matter how many soldiers were willing to go and die. It didn't matter how many strategy they were willing to employ. All that mattered is what is the God on the altar saying? Can I talk to somebody right now? There is a mighty God. There is the almighty God. The king of glory whose habitation is upon this altar and by that God by the almighty God Elohim Jesus Christ have declared that every mountain begin to move right now come and tell somebody say there is an anointing on the altar the altar is delicate the altar is sensitive the Bible says in the book of Leviticus chapter 10 and verse 1 that Abihu and Nadab the two sons of Aaron the priest and these men were themselves priests. Scripture says they brought to the altar a, a strange fire. In other words, here means this man, they wanted to sacrifice at the altar. And they did not realize that there is a kind of fire that you need to bring him to the altar. If you didn't bring that particular fire, you are invoking trouble because everything about the altar is to the living God. And when it comes to God, you don't set the terms of condition. You don't determine how you want to worship him. He determines how he wants to be worshipped. And that's the problem with a lot of people coming to church. They want to serve God their own way. They want to tell God that this kind of service should be good enough for you. But God says, listen, if you are bringing me a worship. Bring me a living sacrifice. Am I talking to somebody? If you're bringing me a worship, bring me a committed worship. If you're bringing your, your offering, give me an offering of value. David said, I will not give God that which costs me nothing. It has to be God that set the rules. And God set the rules. And it says you must not bring a fire from outside. Come on somebody. In other words, the fire that's coming in the altar must be the fire that's taken from the altar. So when they place the animal and they, and they sacrifice, the, the, the next sacrifice, will the, the fire to burn it will come from the fire of the last sacrifice. And so everything stays on the altar. Nothing comes from the outside. Who am I preaching to right now? You can't bring a strange spirit on the altar you can bring a strange fire on the altar everything that you bring it has to be what God approves of let me talk to somebody right now because too many times we just bring in strange fire to the altar too many times we are bringing a strength we don't understand that it is not every spirit that is of God come on somebody tell somebody beside you when you bring fire bring the fire from the altar you can bring a foul fire to the altar the Bible says 
when the two sons of, 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 of Aaron, when they brought the wrong fire, what happened? They were consumed. Why? Because they brought the wrong fire. You got to tap into the flow of what God is doing. You cannot run with God on your own terms. You got to say, God, what is your will for my life? Come on, somebody. I feel the Holy Ghost here this morning. The reason why too many of us are not stepping into our destiny is because we ask God to approve what we are doing rather than for us to do what God has approved. Am I talking to somebody? You can't bring a strange fire. You got to say, God, let your fire, hallelujah, burn in me. I don't want the strange fire in my spirit. I want the fire of God to burn in my life. And so God says, not only must you, hallelujah, value your altar, you must always have fire upon your altar. Not only must you have fire upon the altar, you must have the right fire, which is the fire of the Holy Ghost upon the altar. Not only must you have the fire of the Holy Ghost upon the altar, the fire of God, it has to burn day and night. God says the fire can never be put down. On Friday, I was talking to the believers. I was narrating how they, uh, the, the Bible says in the book of Numbers chapter 11 that uh, there were 70 elders who had come, hallelujah, to receive a portion of the spirit of God that was upon Moses. If you, are, if you don't know that scripture, you can read it when you get home. Numbers chapter 11 from verse 16 all the way to verse 30. The Bible says when Moses had, uh, uh, had, had presented these elders before God, uh, the Lord took a uh, portion of the anointed that was upon Moses and God placed it on all 70 of them I want you to hear me the Bible says all of them they began to prophesy when the anointing came on them and the Bible says after that they ceased to prophesy and so I said to myself why did this man prophesy only one day and they ceased to prophesy it's because they were not connected hallelujah with the flow of what God started to do and so the anointing came one time and lifted and I started to challenge the believers and I'm saying many of us many times we tap into a God realm but we are not able to maintain it sometimes you see God bless you one time and you don't manifest that blessing every day sometimes you see God heal occasionally sometimes you see the move of God sometimes you suddenly see See, hallelujah, your hands are healing sick people, but you don't continue in it. Many times we come to church, and when we come, we get the impartation of the anointing. But by the time we come back the next week, it looks like we are back to the same place of emptiness, and we feel hollow. And we say, what happened to the anointing that I got yesterday? And we don't understand things, that for that altar to keep burning, there has to be fire upon that altar and that fire must be there day and night the devil is a liar this is how the devil is stealing the blessing of the people of God this is why we are not able to maintain consistent breakthrough consistent miracle this is why we are happy on Monday and sad on Tuesday come on somebody this is why for many of us it's only when we come to church that we get excited but outside of the buildings we don't carry the same anointing this is why when we come together we gather together you sense a release in your spirit you sense that God's hand is heavy on you but by the time you get back home you can continue to keep that momentum of prayer that momentum of a high level capacity that momentum of 
joy and power. You're asking yourself, what's going on? Could it be that the fire has been taken out of the altar? Could it be that the fire was on the altar at the beginning, but yet the power and the anointing has been lifted from the altar? God is raising a new breed and generation of believers who are not excited only when they are in church, who are not happy only when they're done watching a, a, a program or a service, but people who are able, glory to God, to maintain their fire. Every day they are maintaining their fire. Not only are they maintaining their fire, but they are growing in grace and growing in capacity because if every time the anointing came on you, you did not let that anointing to filter away, but you kept building upon that anointing within a measure of weeks and months. You're going to be moving in a level that you never thought was possible. My God, I'm talking to somebody right now. God did not want you to just tap in and tap out. Come on, somebody. This is not a job. This is not a routine. This is a lifestyle. This is something that ought to be who you are. That every day of your life, you are carrying the glory of God. And the fire never leaves the altar. Who am I preaching to this morning? It's possible for you to be blessed on Monday and carry to Tuesday and carry the Wednesday day by day, night by night, moment by moment. Come on somebody. One man of God called me the other day and he said, Apostle, whenever I talk to you on the phone, you are always excited. Is there a time that you ever had a low moment? I said, maybe it came and I did not notice because the fire is burning on the altar day and day night unstoppable who am I preaching to right now God is able to bless you on Monday I wish I had somebody on the keyboard right now and bless you on Tuesday and bless you on Wednesday and you keep the blessing on Thursday am I talking to somebody your marriage can be strong in January and strong in February and strong in March and strong in April, May, June, July. Who am I talking to right now? You can be victorious every moment of your life. No damn moment when the fire is on the altar. You don't keep nothing out of that fire altar. Keep the fire burning. My, am I talking to somebody right now? You can prophesy on Monday and still prophesy on Tuesday and still be on fire on Wednesday. You're not hearing me, somebody. I said it was not meant to be occasional. This is not an Easter, Christmas, and New Year's Eve experience. This is who I am. I am a carrier of the fire of the living God. Am I talking to somebody right now? you are blessed every day you don't prophesy one day and you can't prophesy another you are walking as God's altar I say you are God's living altar Am I talking to somebody right now? Hey, help me, Jesus. I wish Brother Matthew would go on the drums right now. And the anointing is on that altar. There is fire on that altar. This altar is not a plastic altar. It's an altar of stone that's been gathered from uncut stone. A place of worship and devotion to God. That's why I'm born in every day. Am I talking to somebody? Somebody say every day. The Bible says, hear me, in, 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 Abosha, in the book of Hosea, chapter 6 and verse 3. And I, I started to read that place on, 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 on Friday. I want you to follow me. For those that did not hear that word, you need to hear it tonight. And if you heard it, you need to hear it again. You need to hear it again. You need to hear it again. The Bible says in Hosea chapter 6 and verse 3. Let us, if we follow on to know the Lord. If we follow on to know the Lord. Then he shall come to us as the rain. 
So what does it mean when the Bible says, look in my eyes, the Lord will come to us as the rain. What is the Bible saying? I want you to see the principle of the rain. How does the rain come? How does the rain come? The rain comes through a process that's called photosynthesis. And that means that every time that there is rain, it means that there had been an evaporation. The water that's on the earth had left the earth and it's been evaporated into the skies. And when it's evaporated, it will condense. And when it's full, it becomes rain and it pours down on the earth. I want you to hear this. When the Bible says God will come to us as rain, it means that there is a cycle a God cycle of the glory that whenever there's going to be a pouring of the power and the blessings of God on your life, the first thing that has to be is in fact evaporation. And the process of photosynthesis means that you are able to Release something into the atmosphere and it becomes heavy and God pulls it down. He comes to us as rain. He comes as rain. If we follow on, not one time, it comes as rain. Look at my eyes, somebody. If the earth says, well, I'm not going to cause the water to go to the skies. I'm just going to keep it up here. It's never going to be wet again. Look at my eye, somebody. That is the kingdom cycle of increase. God comes to you as rain. I want you to hear this. He comes as rain. Every time that you give worship to the heavens, when your praises goes up, he's going to pour down over you. When you stop worshiping, you become dry. It comes as rain. It comes. It's a daily release that brings a daily harvest. I am programmed. I'm connected into the cycle of the power of God. There were priests who had a responsibility to keep the fire burning on the altar. That was, that was their job. The, the job of this priest was to keep the fire burning on the altar. They never leave that altar without fire. Many times we don't see God move. Because we withdraw the fire from the altar. We don't do it. Like, well, I put my fire there last week and I'm so tired now. Listen, don't stop because he comes as rain. When you pour your praise in the heavens, that's when your blessing comes down. He comes as rain. When you release your praise, your sacrifice, your giving, your time, your energy, your resources. When you go out and evangelize to somebody, he comes as rain. One of the strategy of the devil is to keep the believer frustrated. Look at my eyes, somebody. He wants to keep you frustrated. He wants to make people offend you. Okay. So when you are offended, you withdraw your process of release. You don't want to release your gift. I don't want to serve. I'm tired. I'm feeling low. I don't want to give anymore. I don't know what's going on. What happens is you interrupt the flow. And the, there's no more harvest. There's no more release. It comes as rain. Listen to me somebody. Your daily victory. 
your daily, okay, I'm talking to somebody right now, your hourly victory, your minute by minute victory, your second by second victory is guaranteed, it's possible as long as you keep the altar burning. My God, every time I ask God, I say, God, I thank you how far that you have brought me. But Lord, I say, I'm looking in the next many years of my ministry. Come on, somebody. Lord, how am I going to survive and succeed the next 20 years? My God, the next 30 years of my ministry. God, how will I get through the next 40 years? My God, is a long time. And you know what the Holy Ghost said to me? He said, win day by day. Win this battle day by day. Am I talking to somebody? How are you going to stay strong in the next 50 years? Win every day. Tell somebody, I'm winning day by day. I'm keeping, God help me, I'm keeping the, the fire on the altar every day. How are you going to be able to stay married for the next 30, 40 years? You keep loving every day. I'm talking to somebody. You keep forgiving every day. Okay. Okay, somebody need to hear that. You need to keep loving. You love your partner yesterday. You can tell your partner, well, I love you last year. And now I don't feel like loving you right now. Last year, love can carry you right now. You got to love them every day. Come on, somebody. You got to look at them and say, baby, I just love you right now. I just love you again. Because I know the only way I'm going to survive the next 20 years is to take it one day at a time. The only way, God help me, you're going to survive the next 100 years of prosperity is to get blessed every day. Come on, somebody. When you get blessed every day, when you get blessed over 10 years, it adds up. Oh, help me, Jesus. The only way you're going to keep your prayer life going is when you pray every day. Don't pray every week. Don't pray once a year. Pray every day. Come on, somebody daily victory. We keep the fire on the altar. How many people are here that they want to continue to dwell in that frequency, that momentum? I'm not coming down. This is not a balloon. This is substance. This is God taking me higher from glory to glory. I'm going to run through a few things that I believe God would have you do every day. Number one, if you're going to stay afloat, if you're going to survive, if you're going to thrive, if you're going to believe God for your next level. One thing you got to do every day, saying of God, is to, is to study every day. You got to hold a book studied with your Bible in your hands every day. Am I talking to somebody right now? Too many people, they rust out. They are not able to keep the momentum of their career. They are not able to keep the momentum of their ministry. They are not able to keep the momentum, the freshness of their lives because they are rust Anybody want to succeed? Anybody want to fulfill the will of God? Everybody want to be on top of their game? Anybody want to be on the cutting edge of the will of God for their lives? Then you got to grab a book. Go online and read something. You got to be updated every day. If you had a computer, come on somebody, or you had a phone, or some kind of IT device, after a while your computer was says, updates are available. Am I talking to somebody right now? And you say, you want me to update? My Android phone will say to me, update available. And it's going to give me three options. It says, update right now. It says, set a time or update overnight. And every time I click on that update overnight, so that by the time I get up in the morning, I have a brand new phone. Am I talking to somebody? You got to be on top of your game. How many believers know that God is going to give them multi-million dollars. You can get it if you stay stale. You can get it if you stay rusty. You got to go out there. Come on somebody. You got to learn something new. You got to be on the power and shift of what God is doing. Every day I'm learning new things. Every day I'm getting a book. Every day I'm holding something to my mind. Paul said to Timothy give yourself to reading. He said bring me the books and the parchments. The Bible says study to show yourself approved. A workman that need 
not to be ashamed. How many body here today that says, God, I'm going to keep studying. Jesus, every day I'm learning. Tell somebody, say, I'll keep learning how to be better, how to be smarter, how to be greater. I'm doing it every day. I'm not going to say to God, well, I read something last year. I don't have to read again. I say, God, I'm going to keep reading every day. Am I talking to somebody right now? Help me whisper to someone's ear and tell them, read every day. Read every day. Read every day. You got to read something. Learn something new. Come on, somebody. Don't stay where you were. There's a, there's a cutting edge technology. There's something going on now. Things are shifting right before our eyes. And the believers are not tapping in because we are not daily engaging productivity. Learn. There is something God is doing right now. We are in the end of days. The Bible says knowledge will abound in the end time. And too many times the believers we do everything but read. You gotta read. I've written so many books and many of y'all come to this church. You haven't even bought and read any of my books. How do you know my spirit? How do you tap into my mountain? How do you tap into my revelation? How do you dissect what God is telling me? If you can't even read my book. Some of you haven't read anything throughout this year. Before the end of the year, you gotta read two books. My God, who am I talking to? Get online and download something. Read every day. Tell somebody I'm reading every day. Number two, pray every day. Do what? Pray how, how long? If the devil can make you not to pray, it's going to mess things up for you. You're just going to look around you and you see stress has accumulated. Look at my eyes, everybody. Life becomes harder when we don't pray. Okay. I'm talking about daily prayer. I'm not talking about occasional prayer. See, sometimes a whole lot of people, they just come to church. And when they come in the church, they pray for two hours. And they don't pray throughout the week. Wrong strategy. It's better you pray five minutes every day than pray two hours one time. Consistency, the fire must stay on the altar. Pray every day. Jesus prayed every day. How did I know? Give us today our daily bread. He needed to ask for yesterday's bread. Our daily bread. Tomorrow, our daily bread. The Bible says it, 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 it shall come to us. Hosea chapter 6 verse 3. He will come as rain. Come on somebody. And then he said it will come as the former and the latter rain. That means that the former blessing, man of God, are you with me this morning? The former blessing is what produces uses the ladder blessing. Come on somebody. So what is ladder today will be former by tomorrow. And by the time we hit the next day. So God blesses in the sequence of former ladder, former ladder, former ladder. So he asks you to pray every day. The prayer for yesterday carries you to a new level today. I'm talking to somebody right now. And, and, and something you want to do is to prophesy every day because your prophecy creates your future. So when you prophesy yesterday Today. You see the manifestation today. You prophesy today. And what you prophesy today. Because your destiny tomorrow. You Come on somebody. So you move with the history. Destiny. History. Destiny. Somebody say when is my history? My history was last minute. My destiny is right now. My time is, is tomorrow. My history was yesterday. I don't dwell in my history. I mean my destiny. So my prophecy is creating my God. Are you with me man of God? My prophecy is creating my next destiny and then there will be history after that destiny is accomplished that's why I don't stay where I am I thank God for yesterday's blessing I thank God for what is done since the beginning of January in your life in this house but I'm telling you if we don't stop praying we are cultivating what God is going to do next
God is getting ready to do something next. Don't lose it. Tell three people, don't miss it. Tell somebody, say, don't miss it. Tell somebody, say, don't miss it. Tell somebody beside you, say, don't miss it. He's doing something now. Don't be carried away by what you had before and overlook what God is about to do now. Heaven is releasing something in this moment. You got to tap into it. Let me hear you say, yes, Lord. Tell three people, I pray every day. Every day, every day, every day I'm praying. Tell three people, say, I'm loving every day. If you're going to survive this life, you got to love every day. I'm talking to somebody right now. You got to do what? You got to be a lover every day. You got to keep loving on people every day. I'm telling you something. If you don't love every day, the devil going to make you grump, grumper. The devil is going to wrinkle you off and make you all twisted, praise God. But you have to love every day. If you don't learn to love every day, you'll be carrying the mess of two years in your spirit. Am I talking to somebody right now? You got to wake up every morning and say, God, I'm loving somebody today. Am I talking to somebody right now? I'm loving. I'm a man of God. I'm a woman of God. I'm a man of power. God, I'm going to love on somebody. I have no place for hatred in my life. I have no place for offense. In my life, I have no place for bitterness in my heart. That's why, man of God, when people come to me and, they, and they're trying to apologize for something that happened two years ago, two weeks ago, two days ago, I said, what you talking about? What you talking about? I don't even know because I, I already woke up too many days over it. There's too many love. The Bible says he daily loads us with benefit. I'm talking to somebody right now. Demons have no power over you once you start to love on people every day. Am I talking to somebody right now? The devil, you got to wake up loving every day. Love every day. Tell somebody, I'm loving you every day. You just don't know it yet. I choose to love you every day. I choose to wake up every morning to a newness of love. And that's why I keep the fire. That's how the fire keep burning on the altar. Tell somebody, I'm moving in my gift every day. Look at my eyes. Move in your gift every day. Move in your what? Move in your anointing every day. Find somebody and preach Jesus to them. Be a fruit every day. Lay hands on the sick and let them recover every day. Am I talking to somebody right now? Do it how? Every day. A fire must never leave the altar. If you let the fire go out, then there's going to be flies coming in on the altar. Keep the fire burning. I told you the story of a brother. This man of God, the Holy Ghost told him to, to do evangelism every day. God told him, go out every day and evangelize. And one day, he came from work. He was late. He was tired. And the Lord said to him, still go out anyways and evangelize. And you know what happened? It was dark. It was in the middle of the night. He went to the street corner. Not too long ago, he found somebody. He preached Jesus to him. He got all his details and said, uh, please come to church. I'll call you. I'll pick you. He, he won a soul to the Lord. He got back home. Listen to me. When he got back home, the Lord said to him, go to bed. I want to do a surgery on you. I want to work on you. And prior to that time, he had had a surgery where there was a part of his body that was replaced. And there was a bow that was put there and an iron was placed inside him. He actually went to have the surgery in India. And God said to him, I will work on you now. And when he slept, he woke up the next morning and he found the bolt and the iron that was placed in him beside him on his bed. The Holy Ghost did surgery on him. Come on, give God praise somebody. And the Holy Ghost took it out. And he found it on the bed. And it was perfect. No more pain. Let me say this to you. You never know the day of your visitation. You never know. If the Lord has given you an assignment to do. Do it every day. If the Lord has called you. To be a soul winner. Go out there. And bring souls into the kingdom. And don't do it once a week. Do it. Every day, be intentional.
target somebody. Minister to them and say, I, I, wanna, I just want to share with you about the love of God. Do it every day, consciously. Consciously. Do it every day. Do it every day. Do it every day. Move in your anointing every day. Sing every day. Clap every day. Hallelujah. Talk to somebody every day. Every day. Every day. I'm coming for you. Let people know you. Be consistent in your calling. Listen, somebody. Give every day. Give. Give to the Lord every time. Give every day. We're like, oh, I gave, I gave two years ago. God, I gave so much. Now I'm not giving any more. No, keep giving. Tell somebody, say, keep giving. Give every day. Give every day. Every day, pour on the altar. Every day. Every day. Say, God, this is my heart of worship. You know why? If the devil cannot steal your seed, he can't steal your destiny. Somebody lift up your two hands and say, Father, I can hear you. Say, Father. I keep the fire burning on the altar every day. The level of victory that I have seen in this house in the past 12 days that we've been praying every night here at 10 o'clock is unbelievable. And a lot of people think, whoa, they're so crazy. They don't know that there is power in every day. In fact, it's not every day. The Bible says morning and evening. You bring the fire to the altar. Bring it in the morning and bring it in the evening. Stand to your feet, everybody. Come on, stand to your feet. This is your word. Whatever you do consistently, it's going to influence your life. It's going to determine who you are. I just sense the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Keep the fire on the altar. The altar is real. You got to honor the altar. The altar is real. That's where your blessing is.